Here we go with another one of those aesthetic videos, folks. And before we get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to anybody that supports the channel. Over the last month or so, I've suddenly shot up to about a thousand subscribers, and my Dreamcast aesthetic video has had 35,000 views last time I checked. When I uploaded it, I didn't expect it to get 35 views. And not to mention, it's been lovely to hear from everybody who's shared nostalgic and supportive and positive comments, so yeah, thank you all very much. And now, on with the regularly scheduled video. I was born in the 80s, and I grew up playing video games mainly in the 90s and early 2000s. I've been thinking recently about how a lot of the games that I really vibe with from around that time have a very specific sci-fi aesthetic. Usually a lot of clean sleek metal and neon with cool blue lighting. It's the control room from Dino Crisis. It's the sci-fi handgun from Time Splitters. It's the neon skyscrapers of Benton Cho. It's the control room from Blue Stinger. It's the nighttime highways of Armored Core. It's the shiny armor of Master Chief. It's the control room of every 90s game. It cops heavily from 80s sci-fi action movies and futuristic manga and anime, big computers, neon cities, super clean but also industrial as fuck, you know? Okay, I hope you're feeling the vibe that I'm putting down now because what I want to do here is give you some examples of great games that I feel really master this aesthetic and then hopefully encourage you to check some of these out. If somebody asked me for just one screenshot that summed up the vibe I'm trying to describe here, I'd be tempted to show them Pioneer 2 from Fantasy Star Online. It's a huge neon city inside a spaceship and it acts as your hub in the game. From here you can teleport down to the surface of Ragol to fight monsters or you can beam up into yet another slick looking control room. Look at all these cool blue holograms here and these sciency doodads. This era in games definitely had the best control rooms, that's one thing we've established. Back down now into the residential area, and the super bright lights here feel mighty comforting as we tour around the medical bay. And then over here we got the Hunter's Guild where you can pick up missions. We got this little shopping area where every merchant is colour coded. And then there's various sci-fi looking peeps wandering around ready for a good chat. This place put me in mind of something like Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Maybe someday I'll do a whole video about Fancy Star Online because it is a pretty damn special experience. But for now... Let's take a GameCube flavoured detour through the white silver corridors of Piano 3 with badass hero girl Vanessa Z. Schneider. This game's one of those character action thingies like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, but it's got a heavier focus on gunplay. It's very arcadey, and as such, it has very little story. And all the levels look more or less like this that you see in here. It's a very simple game, and you can put it away in about 3 hours or so, but it's also one of those that you'll want to come back and replay to beat your score or whatever. I love short games that make me want to replay them, but that's an idea for another video. Right now we're talking about vibes, and what a vibe this is. The cool chrome everything. The white high-tech bodysuit that Vanessa is rocking. The mechs of all shapes and sizes. It all just really seems like one very singular vision. Gameplay wise, I can't necessarily say it has too much to recommend it over something like Vanquish, but if you like your sci-fi short, simple, and GameCube flavour, then this one is for you. If you've seen basically any other video on the channel, then you probably know how I feel about Blue Stinger. A hidden gem. A masterpiece of game design and art direction. And I've recently gotten hold of the Japanese version too, which is what you're seeing here. Now, why use the Japanese version instead of the international release, you might ask? Good question. This was Shinya Nishigaki's original vision for the work. He really wanted it to be all cinematic and so forth, and he wasn't happy about Activision fucking with the camera when they published it outside of Japan. So here we can see the game in its original cinematic glory, with these tracking camera shots. Check out the bright lights and the Christmassy vibes of the Hello Market over here, or the honestly pretty unique and austere colour scheme of the power plant. Or even just the blue sloping chrome of the shuttle port at the start of the game. This one really has it all if you go in for this kind of look. But in this video, I am just doing a quick blast through many games, and so we will leave Blue Stinger here for now, because it's time to split. Time Splitters is a better game than Goldeneye. There, I said it. Also made by Rare, and built on the same engine, but this one feels just a lot more fluid and the locations are considerably more interesting. 
being a time travel time game about time fighting time villains, we go all over time, into the past time, and also into the future time. And there's two time levels that interest me, that I feel do a really good job of showcasing both sides of the aesthetic that we're talking about here. The first one is the Cyber Den, which is what you've been seeing here. It's got that grungy industrial thing going on, a la Blade Runner, Alien, Judge Dredd, etc. And it's full of evil cyborgs, which kind of remind me of certain scenes from Tetsuo the Iron Man, if you've ever seen that one. Anyway, what I'm saying is we got rust and big fans, we got rockets and floppy disks, and we got old computers. We got a vibe that's distinctly uninviting, and yet somehow strangely compelling. Then we move to something brighter. Not only the best tune in the game, but maybe the best level in the whole Time Slayers franchise. Spaceways. The mission here sees you as a robot trying to get through the duty free area and hop on a rocket and it's a ton of fun as you blast your way through rocket turrets, aliens and enemy robots that all want to stop you, for some reason. But what I like is how it gives us a gloriously colourful and opulent future with these nice round Jetsons cars and the huge spaces all cleanly furnished and looking like peak luxury with that world of tomorrow energy. The heavily branded port here with the logos everywhere and the high contrast primary colours really reminded me of Futurama. Good news everyone! I've sold Planet Express to Mom! Not only the best cartoon of its time, but also a great game. Well, the fry part is anyway, Bender and Leela's parts are sort of hit and miss. I guess your mileage is going to vary on this one depending on how much you enjoy the show. Futurama obviously has that squeaky clean robots and chrome kind of look, rather than the crusty cyberpunk stuff. And that's what the game gives us. The first third of the game, where you play as Fry, sees you travelling through Planet Express, into the sewers, through train tunnels and then throughout various districts of New New York. There's a bunch of cute nods to gags from the show, but even if you've never watched it, the levels here still have a very nice visual quality I think. I'll leave you with this image of a sushi chef chopping a slug whilst we mosey on over to the grungy shitbag future of Armored Core. Now, this one is all about derelict, sterile environments where the only signs of life are thick mechs. It's got a huge mood that I will try and perhaps fail to explain to you. The game casts you as the newest Raven, which is a type of mercenary, and you work for an organisation called Raven's Nest. And whenever you're in the intermission menu, which represents your base, you hear this fucking cool tune that just does something to my soul. So you're a mercenary here, you don't really have any morals, you just take on whatever job pays. Your work takes you from the nighttime highways that I mentioned at the start of the video and then on through some abandoned factories and into some impressively huge underground facilities. It's a lot of tunnels and whatnot, but the decor is suitably scuzzy and dilapidated and the sound design is excellent. Often you're just left with the clunky sounds of mechanised striding as your walking tank patrols the area hunting down targets. Ominous, bleak and good. Kind of tangential to this, but I also really like that concrete and steel military aesthetic of games like Extermination, Carrier and most obviously Metal Gear Solid. There's something about that uncanny feeling of empty military facilities we got on the 5th and 6th gen that just hits different. These days big games pride themselves on populating their spaces with NPCs to make them feel immersive and realistic, but I really prefer it when these facilities are left barren. It feels weird and otherworldly and often adds to the feeling of being a lone operative in hostile territory. Hey, it's Capcom's most underrated game. Now Dino Crisis isn't necessarily futuristic at all, but the idea of resurrecting dinosaurs with the time machine is definitely sci-fi. And the military complex that you find yourself exploring has a variety of cool future feels. We got that clean, clinical, spacious look of the main hall here, giving us a sort of Umbrella Labs minimalism with the big insignia on the floor. And speaking of labs, we got those in this game too, and they have a similar whited out look. But then you got these cool slidey metal doors and the big computer rooms and the planning rooms with the projectors and stuff. Plus then we also got that rust and generators look in and around the yard outside the facility. So I'd say Dino Crisis is peak sci-fi. Dino Crisis 3 even went full sci-fi by sending us into space and battling dinos aboard a massive craft. That's obviously dumb as hell, but I was completely down for the ride and I so badly wanted to like that game, but alas I came away disappointed. 
So if I'm recommending a Dino Crisis game to you, it's gotta be the original. And now, one from Konami's heyday. The story of Mr. Diaz, Johnny Slater, the President of the United States, and the gargantuan alien invasion. I'm talking, of course, about Hybrid Heaven on the N64. Not only do I love the aesthetic of this game, but I also love its super weird blended approach to gameplay. I'm working on a video all about that right now, so let's just sit to the aesthetic and uh, I'll get to that later. This one runs the gamut from pretty classic X-Files body snatcher tropes with its Area 51 style setting, but then you also got the Blade Runner grim industrialism with the little floating surveillance drones and a little bit of Terminator and the percussion heavy soundtrack. It's a pretty intense tour de force of many sci-fi influences in my opinion. At the time it did get criticised for all the locations being a little bit samey, and whilst I can't necessarily defend that, I will just say that I enjoy it being chased around by a massive steaded out xenomorph across this bridge, seeing the alien test subjects bang menacingly on their cages in this containment area, and of course, a bunch of consoles and lots of blue-green neon everywhere. I could also talk about Headhunter here, that old Dreamcast game that got ported onto the PS2 with Jack Wade that was very cool and very Verhoeven. But hey, I've just finished recording a playthrough of that, so look forward to my review on it in about two weeks. Rambling aside, the point I'm getting to here is that I love all this all blue high tech cyber aesthetic and I think it had a very prominent place in the games of my youth thanks to the influence of media like Ghost in the Shell and Cyber City Way to Wait to Wait and all the other stuff that I've mentioned already. I'm going to leave it there for today because this is a pretty niche topic but just something that I'm interested in and wanted to talk about. There's obviously other games I could have brought up here like Dread vs Death, MDK, or even something more modern like Astral Chain, but I just didn't want to turn this into a super long video. As always, I thank you very much for taking the time to watch this, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe discovered a game or two that you might like to check out. Take it easy folks and I will see you in the next one.